Hey guys, welcome to the channel where I discuss personal finance and investing. My name is Clarence Patrick and in today's video, I'm going to be discussing steps that new investors should take when starting to invest in the stock market. Now, if you like this kind of content, please consider subscribing and while you're at it, smash that like button. I'd really appreciate it. Now, I'll often have people that will come up to me and they'll say, hey Clarence, I want to start investing in the stock market, but I don't know where to start. I don't know how to buy a stock and I don't know how to research a stock to actually purchase. So what I tell them is before diving into the market and blindly purchasing a, um, a single stock is that they should really learn the basic concepts of investing and how the stock market works. So before investing in a stock market, you should understand how stocks work, um, what are bonds, what is a diversified portfolio, what is an ETF or an exchange traded fund? What is a mutual fund? So these are some of the basic concepts that you should familiarize yourself with as you're starting to learn about the key concepts within the stock market. I also tell people that there's numerous online resources that they could utilize for free to do basic uh, stock market uh, searches on key concepts and terms to familiarize themselves I'm a big supporter of, of financial literacy books, and one of the books that I like to uh, recommend to people is called Learn to Earn by Peter Lynch. So a combination of online research and reading some entry-level investment books will not only help you familiarize yourself with key stock market terms and concepts, but it will also start to build your financial base, which will be critical for you for your long-term investment goals. The next thing that I would suggest is really start to think about what are your financial goals or your financial plans for why you want to invest in the stock market. So for me personally, I supplement my 401k. So the money that I invest on a monthly basis is all going towards a retirement fund that I'm creating through my own brokerage. There could be many reasons why you're investing in the market. It could be to supplement your retirement once you leave the workforce later in life. It could be to save money for a down payment on a house. It could be to uh, pay for um, children's college or, or someone's college or your own. Um, so there's many reasons why people invest. So that that's the second thing that that people need to really think about is, is what's the end goal and why you're investing. And the reason that that is important is because investing is a long-term approach to build. If you're willing to stick to that plan and follow that long-term approach, that's whenever you're going to see the most success and be able to watch your account grow month over month and year over year. The next thing that you need to consider when starting to invest in the stock market is how much you want to invest. So I'm a big uh, supporter of adding a line item to your budget uh, for investing on a monthly basis and investing that same amount month over month without fail. This is helpful when you're first starting to invest because it really starts to form that habit that you'll need in order to invest over the long haul. You don't need a lot of money to start. You can start with $20, you can start with $50, or even $100. But what I would recommend is the amount that you're going to invest, I would make sure that's a fixed amount on a monthly basis that you are comfortable with investing and remembering that this is you're not putting this money in this account as a, a placeholder or a place that you can um, you know, withdraw from when you need the cash. This account should be set up with the end goal in mind. So this is not an account that you're gonna to want to be pulling money from and using it to, to buy something that you probably don't need to begin with. So when you think about investing, think about the end goal that you had in mind whenever um, you went through the previous step where you're, you're thinking about what is the end goal um, of your investment journey? Is it to supplement your retirement? Is it to purchase a home? Or is it to fund education? You have to think about it that way so you can ensure that your money continues to grow at a consistent rate. 
Now the next thing that you want to do is you want to open up a brokerage account. There's tons of reputable brokerages out there um, that you can choose from. But um, some things that you consider, are, do you have an account minimum? Are there any fees associated with, with making trades um, in the account? Um, I will typically um, have new investors open an account with Weeble. Now I have an account with Weeble um, as well as TD Ameritrade. But one of the reasons that I really like Weeble is Weeble allows you to buy fractional shares. So what are fractional shares? So if you go and you purchase, let's say for example, Apple, and Apple is trading at $180 a share. If you want to invest $50 in the market, you can buy $50 worth of Apple as a fraction of the actual share, which is why they call it fractional shares, um, without having to have the cash to purchase the entire share. Now, at the time of, I'm recording this video, uh, TD Ameritrade does not allow for fractional shares. So that's one of the reasons that I really like Weeble. It allows you to buy fractional shares. So if, you have, if you're starting off with a lower amount that you're investing on a monthly basis, um, you will not be prevented from purchasing any of the positions um, that you really uh, that you like. If you're interested in opening an account with Weeble, I'll put a link in the description below that'll take you to their site to where you can sign up for a free account. One of the good things about Weeble is they will often run promotions where they will give free stock for opening an account and depositing any amount into you. If you haven't opened an account, you should consider Weeble because it's free to sign up and there's a very good chance that you'll get free stock when you sign up. So you've set your financial goals, you've decided how much that you wanna to allocate to your investment account on a monthly basis, you've opened your brokerage account, so the next step is you're going to assess what is your risk tolerance. So a disclaimer that I want to make sure that I add to the video is when investing in the stock market, there is no guarantee that you will make money, especially in the short term, which is why I stick to a long-term approach whenever I'm investing. So there's no guarantee that you will make money in the short term. Now with that said, once you've assessed your risk tolerance, then you decide which stock or asset class that you want to purchase. So in my opinion, new investors should not be investing in individual stocks. Now, of course, that's up to you and you can decide to do what you want to do with your investments. But in my opinion, it's a much riskier, um, it's much riskier to purchase individual stocks as opposed to investing in index funds. So index funds are basically a basket of stocks that are picked by a fund manager and added to an overall fund that you would then purchase. So what I often will do is I will give the grocery store analogy when it comes to ETFs. So if you go into a grocery store and you go down the cereal aisle and you look on the shelves, the cereal is essentially represent individual stocks. So on this side, you may have Captain Crunch and Fruity Pebbles. And on this side, you may have um, Wheat Chex, um, Honey Nut Cheerios, etc. So if you think about an index fund, an index fund is essentially a fund manager that's going down that aisle and they're taking a little bit of Captain Crunch, they're taking some Honey Nut Cheerios, they're taking some Fruity Pebbles, and they're putting them all in one basket. And it, the good thing about that is that takes the responsibility of selecting individual stocks off of your shoulders and puts it where it should belong, which is in the hands of a fund manager. So you're not going to be buying those individual stocks. You're going to be buying the actual fund. And if you remember from the beginning of that grocery store analogy, you're buying a little bit of everything in that aisle which will make up that fund. I'll add a link in the description below, which will link you to a website that is an ETF database that will provide you with an overview of all of the sectors in the stock market and some of the top ETFs in those sectors that you can invest in. So you start investing, presumably, in an index fund because it takes you out of the stock picking position and gives you um, a 
passive um, way to invest. Um, and it's been a few months now. So what you need to do is you just need to monitor the uh, return that you're getting um, on the fund that you're investing in. And that's easy to do. What you'll do is you'll just log into your account, depending which brokerage that you signed up with, and it will tell you on the homepage what your monthly return um, and your year-to-date return is. So you'll just manage that um, through the homepage of that app and give it some time, right? So if, you, if you're new to investing, give it six months or so um, before you really start to take any stock into the type of return that you're getting. And remember that um, investing um, is no guarantee to make money specifically in the short term. Um, you're going to have fluctuations in the market depending on you know any type of political uh, things that are going on, um, any type of outside um, forces that um, that are out of your control um, occur could impact the stock market. So just kind of keep that in mind uh, when you're looking to invest and, and really think about um, just reaching your goal, right? So it's not going to be that short-term um, view on it. You're going to look at it from that long-term perspective. And while you're doing that, you want to continue to make sure that you're increasing your financial acumen. And you can do that by watching my channel on YouTube where I will be uh, documenting um, not only uh, financial and personal finance type of topics, but I will be highlighting my specific growth from a financial perspective as I reach my goal. You'll want to invest in, in yourself. You'll want to invest in maybe a course or you'll invest in books to read. And as you get more comfortable um, in the financial space, you'll, it will open up your eyes and then maybe you will want to start investing in some individual stocks. But even uh, me today with, with 10 plus years of stock market experience, I rarely invest in individual stocks. So I have three portfolios at three different brokerages and the mix in my portfolio is about 85% ETF, 15% individual stocks. So I don't just tell you guys to do this. I'm, I'm doing it as well. Hey, that's it. I wanted to put together just a quick video um, on some things that you can do uh, if you're new to investing to get you started in investing in the stock market. Thanks for watching. I'll see you on the next video.